What is going on, beautiful people, boys and girls? I want to first apologize for not posting a video within the last couple of weeks. I've been super busy, but that is no excuse. But we're back on the grind. Turkey season is underway. It's actually coming in less than like two weeks. So I'm going to give you guys a couple tips for you bow hunters out there, because I know there's quite a bit of states out there that open archery season for turkeys before shotgun season opens. So I'm going to give you guys the best tips and tricks as far as going about broadheads and selecting the best broadhead for shooting a turkey with a bow. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Shooting turkeys with a bow can be very intimidating. They have a small kill zone and they move around a lot. You know, a shotgun offers a pretty big pattern to throw at the head or even if you hit them in the body and make a marginal shot. Typically, you're going to kill them with a shotgun when you shoot them. Whether you get a follow-up shot or you just kill them dead instantly, typically a shotgun is the most effective way. But if you're interested in shooting one with a bow, this video is definitely for you because I'm going to give you guys some tips. And eventually, I'm going to do a video where I show you guys actually where to shoot a turkey. But this one's going to be over a couple tips about your bow setup and mostly with your broadhead setup because a broadhead makes or breaks a turkey bow hunting setup. So without further ado, let's get into the tips that I'm going to give you guys in today's video. So when you're shooting... A broadhead at a turkey there's a lot of things that need to be accounted for one I'm always gonna tell you guys get the biggest cut broadhead you can and that's that's super important I can't stress that enough turkeys their vitals are about the size of a softball so you're talking about a bird that looks huge when it's full strut or even with all those feathers but inside of all that feather and all that you know big bird that gets you your heart pounding when they're coming into the decoys or when you're sneaking up on them there's not much for you to aim at unless you're aiming at the head which is about that big or the softball size vital area that you're going to be aiming underneath the wing butt and like i said i'm going to go over a video with that showing you guys where to aim where to shoot and stuff like that but right now we're going to be talking about a broadhead. So the biggest cut broadhead that you guys can possibly find is the best. And typically I'm going to tell you guys a three blade broadhead is what you want. This particular broadhead is a G5 Megami. I've done a review and killed plenty of animals with this. I'll leave a video or a playlist up in the corner so you guys can check that out. But this broadhead has three blades and you guys can kind of see. I'll see if I can get the camera to focus there. But that's a mad mamma jamma right there. So what that's going to do is one, it's going to give you a big cutting diameter. So when you're going through the neck, the head, or even most importantly, the vital organ, which is where I typically try to aim at for a turkey, that's going to leave a lot more damage internally, open up a big wound channel. You're going to get that much more of a chance to hit the heart, the lungs, the liver, whatever that, whatever you're going to kill that bird with, whatever vital organ you're going to hit it with. Maybe you're going to go through the whole entire pump station and drop it dead instantly, which is what we always aim for. And doing a big broadhead like this gives you that best chance of success. Another thing that is super important about having a broadhead like this is typically... Broad, turkeys never stand still. I don't know if you guys have ever really watched a turkey, um, but they never stand still. They're always bombing their head. They're always moving around doing something. And if you make a marginal shot, a broadhead that has a big cutting diameter is going to open up that much more of a wound channel. It's going to cut feathers away. And if you guys are a turkey hunter or just getting into turkey hunting, you might not know, but turkeys really don't have a lot of blood in them. Unless you hit them in the head, they're not going to bleed a lot when you shoot them. They're going to drop feathers. But if you can cut away feathers, what little blood you do get on the ground can be magnified by a bigger cutting surface diameter. I typically try to tell you guys, big broadheads lead to big blood. Um, so if the feathers are cut away, those feathers can soak up a lot of blood underneath that you might not see. Um, due to the fact that, you know, there's under feathers, there's the main feathers, and then they just typically get soaked up, which sucks because every once in a while, and I've even been, you know, guilty of it, you make a marginal shot on a turkey. Having a big cutting broadhead like this is going to cut away feathers and skin. So if you make a marginal shot, that's going to leave more blood on the ground. So, you know, maybe you don't shoot that bird and it die, it doesn't die in sight. Like maybe you shoot it in a field and it goes down into a, you know, a stretch of timber or into a ditch. And you actually have to track that turkey like you would a deer based off of blood trailing, which happens to everyone. You know, I've, I've even been guilty of it where I've shot turkeys and I haven't killed them dead on contact. You know, right there, I don't get to watch them fall. You have to go track them. Either, maybe they're dead when you find them, or maybe you have to make a secondary follow-up shot, which is why a broadhead like this is super effective. Now, there's a different type of broadhead that is a mechanical that can also be super effective when you're actually turkey hunting, and that broadhead is a two-blade. Let me get it out here without cutting my hand off here. <laughs> so here's a three-blade. I just dropped the collar for that. I didn't mean to do that. Three-blade and then a two-blade. The broadhead I just showed you guys with the G5 Mega Meat, I've done a review on it. I'll show you guys somewhere up in there. But this broadhead is a Sever 2.0. It's a big cutting diameter. I always, that's, you know, you guys will notice in the theme of this video, big cutting diameters are the most effective for turkey hunting. Whether you hit them in the head or in the vitals, that's always just keep that in the back of your mind when you're turkey hunting. Big cutting diameter, big blood, that's very effective. 
Um, this is a Sever 2.0. I typically want to go with a three blade, but a two blade is definitely, definitely acceptable. And before I go any further, I will always say that you can kill a turkey with any broadhead. You really can. It's just all about placement and, you know, the right timing of placement. If you hit them in the head, they're going to die, obviously. If you shoot them with a mechanical, fixed blade, single bevel, decapitator broadhead. One thing about decapitators is I never use them. I don't have anything against them. I just don't really like setting up and changing my whole setup for turkeys. And then to just end up switching it back over for deer. I try to find the most versatile broadhead that I can. Um, I'm going to use the same setup for deer that I do for turkey, for elk, for mule deer. Whatever I'm hunting, I typically try to use one broadhead that is an umbrella type of style of coverage. But a single or a two blade broadhead, excuse me, is very effective. Big cutting diameter cut on contact. And here's a little tip for you guys that I'm going to throw in here in the middle of this video. Lower your poundage a little bit. You know, you're going to be like, why would you lower your poundage? If you can keep that arrow in that turkey, you're actually gonna have a better chance of finding it for two reasons. One, typically when you lock a turkey's wings, they don't really like to move. They just lock, they just fall over and they die. Um, two, if that arrow was kept in there with that broadhead, it's gonna keep cutting and they're gonna keep losing more blood. So if they stay in the field, they're obviously gonna watch them die, but that'll also get more blood on the ground because that's gonna keep that wound channel open and you're gonna get more blood on the ground. So definitely think about a two blade broadhead. I definitely suggest it. Now let's go into a fixed blade that I'm gonna suggest. Fixed blade broadheads can be kind of intimidating when you're turkey hunting with a bow for a multitude of reasons. They don't typically have a bigger cutting diameter and typically they are a little more tedious than where you need to aim. So typically I'm always gonna run a three blade because that's gonna give you the biggest wound channel and typically it's gonna give you the biggest uh, cutting diameter too. So you guys are wondering well, what's the difference between a wound channel and a cutting diameter? Cutting diameter is how wide it is. The wound channel is the circumference. So if you think about, you know, something like this, that's your wound channel. That might, that wound channel might only have a diameter of this much or a surface area this much, excuse me. So typically I'm gonna use a three blade, bigger wound channel, bigger cutting diameter, and that's gonna be very effective. I've actually seen a lot of turkeys killed with this broadhead. This is the Ramcat right here. Uh, Ramcat, I think it's like 1.25, so it's not too god awful big, but it definitely gets the job done. When you aim at a turkey, the saying is, if you, see, if you shoot them high, watch them die. If you shoot them low, watch them go. That is, you can't, you almost can't aim too high on a turkey. You can, but you just, there's a lot that goes into that. But when you aim at a turkey that have that wing butt there, where the, here's the neck, here's the wing butt, where, it, where those would intersect right there. That's where you want to aim. And like I said, I'm going to do a full video on that after this. But I just wanted to give you guys a couple tips. Um, key takeaways from this video, three blade broadheads are typically better than two blade broadheads. That's for a bigger cutting surface, bigger wound channel. I'm typically going to go with the mechanicals that it has typically quite a bit um, more considerable of a size of a cutting diameter, and that's going to get you more effective and lower your poundage. Keep that arrow inside that bird, and you guys are going to have a lot better success rate. So I hope everyone is doing super well, and I will see you guys in the next video.